QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Balance Sheet Report Overview. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to be looking at the balance sheet report or various formats of the balance sheet report. Although the balance sheet report is listed as if it's just some other report, just some report like all the rest, it is going to be one of the major two reports that we will be looking at all the time. So when you think of reports, you're thinking these are financial statement reports. They stand out. These should stand out. They should be like colored differently or something in the drop down because these are the two standard financial statement reports on which basically all other reports will be providing more extensive details. So these are the, the core report. Reports drop down, you can find the balance sheet report under the company financial, and then you would go over to the balance sheet, balance sheet down here. You might also be using uh, the report center, which I'll practice doing for a while. And then once I get comfortable or once we are comfortable with the reports we are working with, I will use more and more just basically this drop down kind of format. So you could go to the reports drop down into the reports center within the reports center you want to be on the standard tab i'm going to maximize this screen here you want to be on the standard tab we're in the company and financial now the balance sheet's a little bit hidden down here because they do all the p l which is the other main report that you want to look at your performance report on top so you got to scroll all the way down here to the balance sheet areas so this is a lot you know more more difficult to do than simply hitting the, the drop down. So we have our balance sheet reports up here. You also might be using the shortcuts in order to open your balance sheet reports. And these might be something that are useful to you if you want to put them in your favorite reports, which would be on this icon. You can put your balance sheet and profit and loss might be a little bit easier to get there if you put them in that favorite area. You can also get to them easily by going to the reports drop down and then your reports here, which could be a little bit faster to get to as well. So I'm going to open back up the open windows on the left. Now the report that you're going to want to work with most of the time is going to be the standard balance sheet because that's going to be listing out your entire chart of accounts. But when you display the balance sheet to somebody else and when you first start analyzing it, you might want to look at the summary balance sheet because that will condense the balance sheet down into a few categories. So I'm going to open up these two reports. To open up these two reports, I'm going to just simply run uh, the report here. Here's our balance sheet uh, standard. Now it has one date here because the balance sheet is as of a point in time. However, if you're gonna drill down on the data using the zoom feature, then you'll need a range to do so. So I will typically go to the customized report and have a range here so that I can use that zoom feature effectively. I'm gonna do this for the entire year only even though there's only two months of data in our practice set being 010121 to 123121. So then I'm gonna say, okay, and there's going to be our balance sheet standard. I'm going to go back to the report center. I'm also going to be opening up the balance sheet summary. So let's open up the balance sheet summary report. I'm going to do the same thing with the date. Go to the customized reports up top. I'm going to change the dates from 010121 to 123121. And then we're going to say OK. And there is our summary re report. As you can see, it looks a lot more condensed. I also want to be comparing this to a trial balance because the trial balance is going to give us all of our kind of GL accounts in as short a format as possible. I think it's useful to get an idea of that. So I'm going to go to the reports drop down. I'm going to go to the accounting and taxes. I know I'm doing this with the drop down again. You could do this in the center, but I'm going to go to the trial balance, the trial balance, and change the dates to 010121 to 123121. Once again, this gives us both the balance sheet and income statement, but with no subcategorization. Although it has debits and credits, this can be a very useful report because it basically lists, lists out your chart of accounts, at least those that are in use in one area. I also want to have open the uh, chart of accounts so that we can see that that information that's going to be used to generate these two major reports, balance sheet and income statement, by going to the lists drop down and the chart of accounts. Here's our chart of accounts. So you'll recall that this chart of accounts is the thing that we're going to be setting up when we first set up the QuickBooks account. And then when we enter data into like for the home page, I'm going to jump to the home page using these items, we will then have an impact of at least two transactions typically, or two accounts, I should say, per transaction on the balance sheet and income statement. These things then are creating, with the use of that chart of accounts, the balance sheet and the income statement, these items here, which can be condensed down to 
taking away all the subtotals, simply a trial balance in debit and credit type of format. So these are basically all the accounts that are on the balance sheet and the income statement that are, form, are formal reports. Now, I'm going to go back to the balance sheet standard. I would recommend that this is probably the report that people are going to work with most. And when you are basically entering data and then trying to see what the impact of that data will be on the balance sheet. In other words, you could use this report to drill back down on and go back to the source documentation. And the reason this one is useful is one, it gives you those subtotals. And if you need the subtotals, that can be useful. And it's also listing out all the balance sheet accounts here. Uh, as they are on the GL. So in other words, if you're using a balance sheet account, if I go back to the general ledger uh, account, if I'm, I'm going to go to my uh, chart of accounts, my chart of accounts, then you, you, everything that has a balance sheet account that is in use, that has activity in it, will be shown on the balance sheet standard report somewhere. So all of these accounts then are going to be on the balance sheet. And then if you want to pick up data on them, you can double click and you can zoom into them and you can get this nice transaction detail report that you can then get to the detailed transaction. You can zoom on that further as we have seen to get to the source documentation. So I'm going to close this back out, close this back out. That's why you're typically going to use the standard reports. However, if you present the balance sheet to somebody, you might want to start off presenting them with the summary report, which breaks down this information into more categories, in general, breaking them down into the categories of account type. So you'll see within the current assets, we have, we have the cash or the checking accounts, the accounts receivable, the other current assets. That lines up to, if we go to the chart of accounts, how does QuickBooks know to do that? Because all the checking accounts are, are account types lined up. The accounts receivable is an account type. The other current assets are in the account type. So it just condenses all those into basically the grouping by the account type that is going to be set up. Fixed assets are in the account type. So if I go back to the balance sheet, uh, balance sheet summary here, you got a, a nice condensed format that you can display to somebody. But it's not as useful when you're making the data. Because if I, if I want to drill down on a particular account that's in, say, the current uh, assets, if I drill down on it, there's multiple accounts in there. So I'm not seeing all the breakout of these accounts. I get a, I get like a GL or transaction detail report for multiple accounts. So it's not as useful for internal use as going to the standard sheet where you see all the accounts that will be affected. But again, displaying it can be useful in this format first. So I like to basically break down the actual balance sheet standard report. And let's do so by basically condensing everything down and then expanding it back out so we can analyze what is going on here. So in other words, I'm going to condense all these little triangles from the, from the lowest area to the highest area, condensing them down. Uh, let's see, from the lowest area <laughs> to the highest area here. And then I'm going to condense total assets. And then I'm going to condense the same thing on the liabilities, lowest to highest. So I'm going to con condense all of these and these all the subcategorizations down and then we'll drill down on each subcategory so there we have it and then the liabilities and equity so there's our accounting equation so if you do that you start off with okay our accounting equation assets equal liabilities plus equity that's our accounting equation and then if we break out and, and notice what this means. This means that the assets represent what the company has broken out in terms of dollars. In dollars. Obviously, if we have inventory and units of guitars in our case, we can't put the guitars on there at how many guitars we have. You know, we have to value the guitars in dollars and put the number of dollars on, on the report. And then if we take a look at the liability, and then the liabilities and equity represents who has claim to that dollar amount of assets. Is it some third party? like like a credit card or a loan a bank that we that loaned us money or is it us the equity that represents our portion of the assets that we have claim to in other words if we were to liquidate the company we would have to pay off we would have to sell the assets theoretically getting this much money for that if if we were able to sell everything at the book value and then we would have to pay off the liabilities and then we would be left with the equity that's the that's kind of the book value that we would have in the company as the owners so and so then if I break this back out, okay, well, then let's break out the assets into this categorization, typically that being current assets and then the fixed assets. The current assets represent assets that are more liquid. They're going to be things that are closer to cash, things that we're going to consume sooner in order to, to achieve the goal of the business, which is revenue generation. So this is not yet an account type here. Uh, it's still a grouping within 
the current assets, we're going to have the account types, which include the checking accounts, the accounts receivable, and the other uh, current assets. Now, these need to be broken out. These account types will tie out to, if we go to the chart of accounts, the account types here, banking accounts, receivable, other current assets. So these are now broken out by the account types. That's what the next little triangle will be. If I go back to the balance sheet then, uh, the checking account, why do we break out the checking account separately It's in its own account? Because the checking account has special needs. So the checking account is going to have multiple things that are going to go into the checking account. And therefore, QuickBooks wants to set it up separately. The, the, G, the um, register, the cash register might be a little bit different to set up. And you might have bank feeds that you could set up. And therefore, they want to break out the checking account due to those special needs as a further breakout under the current assets. Note, if you've learned financial accounting, your, your subcategorization stops here. You say, oh, you got current assets, and then you have cash, accounts receivable, and you list out the other current assets. We have further subcategorizations in QuickBooks due to the fact that each of these account types have special needs, such as the checking account, which may have bank feeds and other functionality that's not necessary for other current asset type of accounts. So if I then open that up, we have all of our checking accounts. In our case, we just have one. And then we have the accounts receivable. So accounts receivable, once again, it's just a current assets if, if you look at it from financial accounting standpoint. For, but from QuickBooks, it has, it has special needs and needs to be further broken out into another category other than just other current assets. And that's because uh, the, the accounts receivable represents money that is owed to us by customers. And therefore, we need to support the accounts receivable by, by breaking out a subledger showing us who owes us the money the customers that owe us the money. Therefore, we have to make sure that every time we enter a transaction to the receivable, we're also hitting a subledger that will break out who owes us the money. In order to do that, QuickBooks needs to break out the receivable in its own account type. So that that we're, there's usually only one accounts receivable, and this little dropdown seems very redundant because you usually only have one receivable. You might have an allowance account in there as well. But that little drop down needs to be there because QuickBooks needs to set it up as a separate account type. And then we have the other current assets. These are the other current assets that do not have a special need, but are still current assets. And therefore, they can just simply be grouped in other current assets. In our case, we've got the inventory, the prepaid insurance, undeposited funds. So these are other things that have no other kind of special need that they need to be grouped in their own special category of current assets. So then I'm going to I'm going to collapse this out again. Let's collapse the total assets and now let's consider the liabilities and equity side of things first the liability side of things. If we go into the liabilities here, uh, we th we then say that we have current liabilities, similar kind of breakout. Now, this is not at the level of account types yet. This is a normal financial accounting breakout. We break things out into current liabilities, those that are going to be due within a year. And then if we further break that out, now QuickBooks gets down to account types. So these are going to be, if I go back to the chart of accounts, into the chart of accounts, into the liability section, assets, and then liabilities, we have these account types, which are going to be accounts payable, credit cards, and then all these are in the category of other current liabilities. So then if I go back to the balance sheet, why do we have the accounts payable broken out in its own account type? even though typically, once again, there's only one account in it because the accounts payable, once again, has its own needs. When I, the payable represents us owing somebody money and we owe vendors money. And therefore, I need to have a subsidiary ledger breaking this out, not just by one lump sum, but also by who I owe by vendor. So there's special needs to the functionality of that account. Therefore, it's got its own account type and that we end up with this kind of redundant type of transaction here. Then we've got the credit cards, once again, has its own needs. We might have multiple credit cards in here that we can group into that one category of credit cards, but we can manage the credit cards in a similar fashion, uh, in a similar fashion to manage the outstanding balance. And we might use bank feeds in order to track credit cards as well, connecting to the bank to help us with that. Therefore, the credit cards have their own special needs and cannot just be grouped in other current liabilities, or they could, but they wouldn't be you know, provided with those special needs such as bank feeds and whatnot. And then we have the other current liabilities. This would be everything else that does not fall in to the special needs categories within the current liabilities like accounts payable and credit cards. So we have the loans payable. Now notice this loans payable has another dropdown and you might say, well, is that another categorization? This actually is not another categorization. This breakdown 
this other arrow is breaking down further than if I go to the, like the chart of accounts. It's breaking down further, and that's not by just type now. Now it's breaking down by subcategory. So these, li these loans are broken down by subcategory. You can see these, these were set up by us, not by simply changing the type, but by telling it that I want this to be a subcategory of this category. So if I, if I was to edit this, this account and say edit the account, we can see we set it up as a sub account of the loan payable. So we created this sub account for our organization purposes at a level above and beyond just simply the account type level. So there we have that. So if I break that out, uh, there's the loan payable. And then uh, we have the sales tax payable down here. Once again, this is a special account type uh, within, within uh, the system or the, the sales tax is gonna be a special basically account because it's gonna have to track the sales tax it might be tracked a little bit differently because we're gonna use like a widget to, to pay the sales tax, which we saw on the home page. If I go back to the home page, we got this little sales tax item. So we might have a we might have a special need for the sales tax to calculate that, but we also created this subcategory uh, ourselves. So that's going to be the liabilities. Now let's take a look at the equity side of things. If I break out the equity, now those are all they're all on one level. We don't have any like subcategory of types within the equity, meaning the equity is the type. Meaning if I go to the chart of accounts and go to the equity section. Uh, the equity section, which is here, they're all equity type accounts. The equity section, the whole equity section is the type. There's no subtype as there are for the assets having these subtypes and liabilities having these subtypes. So if I go back to the balance sheet, all of these are going to then be under the type of, of just simply equity. And then we could set up these other equity accounts within it. So that's going to be kind of like uh, the functionality of this, of this system. Now, remember the equity represents our book value in, in the organization, meaning assets minus liabilities is going to equal the equity section. So these are the, these are the assets. This is what is owed to the third party. If I sold, if we liquidated the company, sold it, then we, we theoretically would get this much in dollars if we were able to sell all our stuff for that much, what it's on the books for. Then we'd have to pay off the liabilities of this and we would have then left this much money in theory. So the, the further breakout in the equity section, remember, will depend on what type of organization you are. We have set this up as a sole proprietorship. Therefore, there's only one person we have to break this out, right? We have one owner, so we can break it out between one owner. If it were a partnership, then you'd have a similar situation in that equity as a total would be the same situation. The owners would then still have a claim of 227.15. But then there's there'd be some kind of debate in terms of who which owner you know is subject to you know gets how much of that 227 so you have to set you have to then break out your equity section to those partners tracking you know the value of the equity the book value of the company that would then be assigned to which individual partner if you're a corporation then you typically uh, have multiple owners of the company but it's actually a little bit easier in some way if you're a c corporation or a corporation in general because because then you you try to break out the company into standardized chunks which are shares and you break out who owns what not by basically a, a, a capital account that would track that but instead by equal number of shares or equ shares that are all equal that are owned in in different uh, percentages so if you own more shares then you have a larger claim to to the organization's uh, to the organization's net net assets, but all the shares themselves are equal in value. So in that situation, you want to break out the cost of the shares versus the retained earnings, the earnings of the company that have accumulated over time. So this we're going to standard we're going to generally work with a sole proprietorship here. But notice total equity works in a similar fashion, no matter what no matter what type of entity you have. And then you got to think about. Uh, then you got to think about how to break out the equity in, ter in terms of a partnership or in terms of a, a corporation. Partnership is actually the hardest oftentimes because there's, there's a whole lot of different ways you can split up the equity in a partnership according to different, uh, you got a whole lot of flexibility with the partnership agreement to make different kind of profit sharing agreements and whatnot. So if you're, a part if you're thinking about a partnership, then keep that in mind because it could be a source of of uh, contention, you know, to, to, in the future. But in any case, so the other thing to note about the equity section, note that the, the equity section, 
you might ask, well, how does the income statement fit into the equity section? How, how does, you know, the income statement fit into this whole thing? Because the whole thing is basically one, one thing. In other words, this whole chart of accounts is now being is now being used to generate both the balance sheet and the income statement. And you could see that if you if you take a look at the trial balance, which represents this whole thing that you can see is in balance. So that's telling us we're in balance as the balance sheet is telling us in balance, but this thing is including the income statement and is still in balance. How how does the how does the income statement fit into the balance sheet? Well the so the balance sheet is going to be going to be where we stand at a certain point in time. And then the income statement is going to be breaking out the activity that happened during the last time period. So you can see that they broke out down here net income, which represents the net income for the last time period. So let's just open up the P&L. We'll concentrate on the P&L profit and loss later. But let's just break out that net income and see how that fits right now. If I go to the company and financial profit and loss standard and change the dates, notice we have a range up top from 010121 to 123121. Bottom line of this income statement is 6,132.43. That ties out to the balance sheet. If I go out to the balance sheet, 6,132.43. Notice that this net income being on the balance sheet is weird. That don't, you don't don't you don't normally do that. But quick, I think QuickBooks is trying to tell us. They're trying to show us the link by by placing that net income into the equity section. They're saying, hey, look, that the net income is part of the equity section. The net income is just breaking out part of the equity to show us how much was earned in the prior period. If I go one date up to the next to, to 2022 to the next year, this net income will then change or be be consumed or go into the equity account, which represents kind of like the retaining of the earnings in a corporation. It would be called retained earnings, meaning it's the accumulation of the earnings that have happened over time, which have not yet been distributed out in the form of dividends. Although we have a separate dividend account here or, or, or draws in our case. So 77896. And then I'm going to say plus the 6132.43 is going to be that 84 something. So if I say one date up to January 1st, 2022 and go down to the equity section, you can see there's the 8428. We have no net income because it now rolled into the equity section. So remember, the balance sheet is as of a point in time, as of the end of the year, or as of this date. And, and so let's go back one day again and say, okay, so the balance sheet is as of 12-31-2-1. It doesn't matter what the beginning date is. It doesn't matter that we're starting in January. It only matters when I want to look at the detail, like drilling down on it. Then the date range matters because now I'm only at one day. And if I want to see the detail for the year, I got to go 0-1-0-1. 2 one to see the transaction detail for the year but when i look at the balance sheet that beginning that beginning date doesn't matter that's why when i go to the balance sheet it's not there because the balance sheet is as of a point in time if i want to know how i got here to this point then i need to go to the timing statement which is the income statement which shows us the range of time which tells us kind of like how far we ran to get here and that's how the income statement kind of fits into the uh, balance sheet here also note that on the balance sheet, you might just have one account if you're a sole proprietorship breaking out the equity section. Uh, and, that, and, and, and that means you would have one account or you might try to break out your draws in the equity section as well to another account. Draws means that the company has accumulated income and you're taking it out for your own, business, for your own personal purposes, not for a business expense. Therefore, it's not an expense, but a draw. You're taking out some of the money that has been retained or earned in the company and now taking it out for your personal use and you could record that into a draws account for a corporation the draws account would be called dividends and then you could have another account for the investments you put in money into the company like you could put money into the company and put it into simply equity representing your input into the company the company then owes it kind of back to you or increases the book value of the company to you assets minus liabilities equals equity the amount that assigned to you because you put it in there but you might want to break it out as being separate. This is the money I put in as opposed to the accumulation of earnings, which I have not yet taken out, right? So you can, you can break it out in that format or you might just have one account being basically uh, total equity down here. Now note that if you go to the trial balance, you'll also have, have the balance sheet accounts, which stop down here on the equity section. Here's our, our last equity account. And then it has the, the net income. So notice you have the same kind of breakout here. The equity being at the 77 
uh, 896, 77, 896. If I go to the balance sheet, 77, 896, and then the, the income, 6132. If I go to the balance sheet, that would be if I was to add up all the accounts down below, revenue minus the expenses. That, that's, why, that's why this trial balance is in balance, as is the balance sheet, even though the trial balance shows the balance sheet and the income statement, whereas the balance sheet does not show the income statement because it's just kind of lumping the whole income statement items into that one number that we saw in net income on the income statement. So we'll t we will take a look at the income statement or profit and loss in more detail in a future presentation in a future section. But as we take a look at balance sheet and balance sheet related reports, just remember the relationship between the balance sheet and the income statement. They're kind of the same thing. And you could see that by looking at the trial balance, which is basically those two reports kind of lumped together, removing the subtotals.